please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Well, isn't this just fantastic? Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Hope you're all having a marvellous day today. Today we're going to look at two videos by a TikTok creator called Sam the Anthro. They also have a YouTube channel, I'm not going to link either. I don't want you hassling them in the slightest. They make some comments concerning confidence, body neutrality, fat liberation. I mention those explicitly because they're in the tags they use on the TikTok videos we're going to look at today. Body neutrality is a rather interesting one in this, but the videos concern confidence and attractiveness. Now my view already is you're all humans ugly. You should be ashamed of yourselves. You spend your entire life trying to reach and attain perfection. You never achieve it because you are already genetically stunted. You will never be as amazeballs as me. Get over yourselves. The videos we're going to look at could be seen as fishing for compliments and we'll certainly get to why it may and may not be heavily leaning towards not in a moment. At this point in my life, I feel like if someone asked me, do you think you're attractive? I wouldn't know how to answer them. Now, there is a mentality that goes into thinking like that that is quite unhealthy. Those of us that are English get a pass though. We get a pass because we, by nature, are self-deprecating. That means we put ourselves down because it's our sense of humour. We are quite dry. Ironic, I know, for a guy who's used to saying, oh, moist. That aside, if you don't know how to answer, that speaks volumes about where you are mentally, as in your health, that you cannot simply fob someone off by saying, of course, I'm gorgeous. Get over yourselves, you'll never be as beautiful as I am. Many would say beauty's in the eye of the beholder as well. It's an old antiquated term, but it is still somewhat accurate. I guess the only thing that really challenges that concept are those that import their wives from other countries. I know someone's going to interpret this as me fishing for compliments or for sympathy, but I promise that's not what I'm trying to do. I have a point to make. Well, I'm glad you do have a point because I do too. You see, I think you are fishing for compliments, but not for the obvious reason. You see, I took the liberty of looking through your videos. That's what I'm supposed to do as a creator to make sure that my content is as honest as it can be. And in a video entitled Straight Men Egos, you speak about attractiveness within that as well. Should I perhaps play a short clip of that? I think I should. You can tell how ugly a guy thinks you are or how attractive he thinks he is in comparison to you by the way that he reacts if you say that you're not attracted to him. Well, I hope that drives him a point. I may well revisit that video at other relevant points just to showcase your own little double standard. A one rule for me, but not for thee, essentially. Because when others have confidence enough to say it, you consider it egotistical of the straight white man. Growing up as a young fat kid, I was constantly bullied for my looks, constantly told that no one would ever find me attractive. I see we're off to an absolutely stellar start then, as a young fat kid. Interestingly, where I grew up, there weren't many of those. People always picked on each other though for little details that they noticed. For example, I grew up poor, you could tell. Some didn't have both their mother and father, they noticed. Others drove in a particular type of car that was considered by those standards. Haram! Kids are quite cruel. Some adults are too, in fact. Humanity, as you may know, are quite judgy. You are quite judgy as well, hence the earlier clip. That I would never have a significant other, you know, the whole nine yards. And so as I got older and I was trying to develop a sense of confidence, I would combat that previous bullying by going way in the other direction. You know, posing in front of the camera and going, oh damn, who is she? Like, oh, there's a baddie here. Like, Yes, I'm all too familiar with body positivity and those who try to stick it to the man as it were, those that wronged them. I did it differently, not because I was a fat kid. I was never a fat kid. No, I beat the crap out of my bullies. I also outlived a few of mine so I consider that a win as well. We all take different paths in how we handle these situations. Granted, not all are acceptable. I would argue that by just standing in front of a camera, you're not really sticking it to them at all. Why would they, older people, now anyway, give a damn what you've chosen to do as an adult? Bear in mind here, once we leave school, 
we're not exactly close to these people anymore, are we? It's hardly going to make them feel guilty for what they did to you because they're living their own life through the choices they make. Yours involves you being motivated by those that acted on you in the past. Now I'm at the point in my confidence journey where obviously I know all of those people who bullied me beforehand were full of shit. But I also don't really believe this overly hyped, oh, I'm so sexy, I'm so hot thing that I did to build my confidence. Now that is progress and would now provide ample context as to why you put hashtag body neutrality in your video description. Although I think you shouldn't have believed it in the first place. Hindsight is key here. It was never a healthy mentality to have. As somebody that's never been the most confident, I've never made it a point to put myself out there as much as others to try and big myself up. Because I do believe that we develop egos from that. We can get a bit too arrogant, easily corrupted. We end up joining groups. Those groups in turn pervert the meaning of what it is to be positive about ourselves. It is quite important to be able to acknowledge those kind of things. It's why I don't really care about body positivity and I certainly don't endorse fat acceptance. Neutrality though, I can endorse because that involves me not caring about my looks and certainly none of your looks because I don't want to care about how you look and I certainly don't want to be the person that measures myself up against other people, which is where a lot of the insecurity comes from. I think it's kind of like when you start looking at a picture for too long and it stops looking like a picture and just like a series of lines or colors, or maybe it's like when you say a word so many times that the word loses all meaning to you. I find that happens with art because it's boring. And when it comes to words losing meaning, that is something I fully understand, because as a creator, I have seen over the nine years I've been here, almost nine years at this point, how many buzzwords, or terminating cliches, have lost all their meaning and are now words used by everyone on a daily basis as a way of pigeonholing people over things they can't control, like being straight. You know, like in that video where you crapped on straight white men, which is hilarious. Insert obligatory clip before we continue. And the more like conventionally attractive the guy is, the worse this is. Marvelous. I look at a picture of myself or I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, I, I, I guess this is what I'm working with. I guess this works. Like, See, what you're doing right now is speaking about your lack of confidence in yourself. Whereas before you empowered yourself by sticking it to someone, you've realized that that original foundation is remarkably weak. It's like building your house on sand during a high tide. So now you've lost your basis for where your confidence came from. Usually this is a midlife crisis thing, but you're only 28. It hit you a bit early, I will admit. But that uncertainty needs to be addressed so you can embolden yourself again in the future. If you want to, of course, it is a free choice. Because I've had straight male friends try to ask me, do you think I'm cute? Do you think I'm hot? from a woman's perspective. And I give them my honest answer, which is usually something like, yeah, from a woman's perspective, I think the majority of people would find you attractive, or I think you are conventionally attractive. Interesting in that video how you're able to give it to other people, but you can't introspect for yourself because you're culturally appropriating the self-deprecation of the British. Sorry, English. It's not really a neutral feeling. It's just kind of like a confused feeling. I think I've made it past the point of tearing myself apart every time I look in the mirror. And I guess that's good that I'm, I'm past that point. That is true. But if you want to empower yourself, you do have to find something about you that makes you stand up proudly. Sometimes you have to find that on your own, perhaps not sharing that on social media to make a larger philosophical point. I know what gives me my confidence. I don't have much of it, but I know what I am confident at. I just don't share because this is the internet and I'm not stupid enough. I also don't do philosophy. The same can be said for many creators, many people in many walks of life. It is a shame though it took 28 years to get to that point. But at the same time, you do have hopefully many years left and you can continue to do that. Again though, I have to point out this does seem a tad contradictory to your straight men's egos video. I do not personally find them cute or hot or sexy, which doesn't mean that they aren't those things. They're just not my cup of tea. And the way it bothers them so much, they'll be like, it's okay, you can just say I'm hot. But I've had people ask me like, do you think you're attractive? Do you think you're a good looking person? 
and I don't know what to tell them because I feel like my image of myself is so skewed at this point that I couldn't really give them an accurate position either way. Essentially that video can be boiled down to the following. I just want to pointlessly drag out a conversation rather than simply fobbing them off while I continue to search for the kind of person that I really am because that's a me thing and I don't need to share with the class. But at the same time I'm fishing for compliments while simultaneously apparently not fishing for compliments while I continue to make videos dunking on other people cause straight and of course white. Now shortly after releasing that video you made another one replying to a comment because that's how TikTok works and I found it amusing enough that I thought let's go through that. Okay you seem like you are genuinely trying to understand fat people's perspectives and so I will try to answer this question politely even though this is a question that fat people are constantly having to answer for thin people. It doesn't matter if you're constantly asked, the only thing that really matters is whether or not you can answer it. Although you could also argue, if you're pedantic enough, whether you can act upon it to make positive change unless of course you've always been the way you are and are quite happy the way you are because you're body neutrality. Number one, you are proposing an individual solution to a systemic issue. A systemic issue? Is that what we're calling it? How cute. It's a rather fancy word for personal choice, for the most part. So let's say in some reality that I decide to lose a bunch of weight and suddenly I fit into straight sizes and I don't have to shop for plus sizes. What about every other fat person on the planet? On Omegon 2 yesterday I made a video talking about somebody who said something like this and I'm going to give you a very brutal and blunt response. Screw other people and how it impacts them when you do something for you. They, like you, need to make a choice to improve your life for yourself. You are after all an adult, your body, your choice. If you allow other people to dictate how you live your life, much like you did when you were body positive, you are under their thumb. It is a pathetic way of not being in control of your destiny, your future, your health. You are not in control of it if you want to assign it to other people's as well. So you're all a collective like the fecking Borg. Are you proposing a future where fat people just don't exist? In an ideal world, yes. Because then there wouldn't be so much pointless gluttony and laziness in the world. Of course, at the same time, there would be less health concerns that cause people to be overweight. There's no such thing as the perfect body after all, and people do come in fact in different shapes and sizes. Ideally, a perfect society would not want representation from those who are often considered lazy. Because that's not a reality that could ever actually happen. Yes, I am very much aware that the current version of society in some countries molly coddles the crap out of people who make the choice, the conscientious choice at that, to gorge themselves on four to 5,000 calories a day to maintain a size that is unsustainable and is leading to the inevitable decline in the national longevity average age thingmajiggy doodah what's it. Thing. Secondly, let's say tomorrow I decide to try to lose a bunch of weight. Okay, how am I going to buy workout clothes? You don't need workout clothes per se to start this process. You can wear something as simple as standard sweats if you don't already own some. Goodwill. There you go. Failing that, you just wear clothes that are a bit more loose fitting at first, that are able to absorb small amounts of sweat because you've got to start somewhere. Put some money aside into a little tin perhaps. You have to make the conscientious choice to change for yourself. If you are seeking to simply make an excuse for why you can't do it, it tells us you are not in the right place mentally to even try it. I go to the gym every single day. Yes, I'm flexing. I typically wear baggy clothing, just like a hoodie and some joggers, yeah. In the summer, those joggers will be thinner and so will the hoodie. But I wear looser fit clothing because that's easier to work with for me. If you can find clothes like that, do that. If you don't have it, go get them. Don't make an excuse, just get them. Am I just supposed to not have clothes until I reach some desirable size in which I'm allowed to have clothes again? No, you, over a period of time, you replace the clothes that can be replaced when you have the funds to replace them, or you take up a quaint little hobby called sewing. I've done this with clothes in the past, where I have lost weight in areas like my legs, for example. My quads aren't as big as they used to be. So I have the trousers taken in on the quads a bit. So I don't have to buy new trousers immediately. It's all you have to do. You adjust your clothing. 
And then when you are at that place where you can justify the spending and can afford to, you go all out, you buy the luxurious clothes you deserve, the reward for your hard efforts, and then go put the weight back on because you've given up. Thirdly, you describe this as a wake-up call, that if there aren't clothes in my sizes, then that should be motivation or give me the thought to lose weight. Here's the thing though, here's a little secret for you babes. My entire childhood essentially, from the age of like 10 to the age of 22, was trying to lose weight, was trying to be this ideal size that society had decided I needed to be. There are so many comments I want to make about your statement there where you seek to blame rather than take responsibility and improve yourself for yourself, but it turns out there isn't enough time in one video to explain just how stupid your take is. I have made it quite clear on a number of occasions in many videos, there are those who will do and those who do not. Those that do not will try and cope in some manner. Blaming anyone but themselves is preferable for them because then they don't have to shoulder the burden of their choices because they can fob it off onto someone else, whether it be a community they want to represent at the cost of their health, whether that be the clothes they cannot afford to replace even though you don't have to replace them. And of course the idea of a wake up call being the fault of anyone else from one's past as to why one was unable to grow up at a reasonable weight. The parents, by the way, are to blame for that. The blame then went to you the moment you became an adult. I could, by the way, prattle on all day about that comment alone, and the rest of your video is just that, continuing to prattle about unnecessary drivel because you refuse to take responsibility and want to be polite and courteous in your response. You failed at that, by the way. I worked out five, six, seven days a week two hours a day. I ate everything I was supposed to eat. And you know what that did? It didn't make me skinny, it just gave me an eating disorder.